be doing a little watercolor today. I've got my panel here at an angle. That way everything kind of runs down. And basically I am just going across with clear water. I've got the corners taped to keep it in place. And watercolor paper does buckle a little bit. So it's always a good idea to tape it down at the corners. And because our mat does not cover the whole area, it doesn't matter that the corners will not get any paint on them. But I just got everything nice and wet. Let's start off with some blue. And I've got a large brush and you can see how, because it's at an angle, you can see how the paint is running down. And I'm gonna go wider than what our mat covers. We don't wanna find out in the end that we didn't quite get it wide enough. I'm gonna pick up some alizarin crimson. And put that in. So as you can see, it's starting to turn all, all more of a lavender as I come down. We get more of the lavender color. Now we may not see the yellow down here, but I'm gonna put a little bit down here. Depends on where our horizon is. And I've got paper cloth, um, paper towels to dry my brush on when I need to. Let's go into a little more of that alizarin right through here. And let's go back into some of the blues. Let's get it a little darker. And that's the nice thing about watercolor. You can do it in thin layers, or you can do a little heavier. And once it dries, you can go back over and give it extra layers. So I'm just now taking my paper towel and forming some cloud formations, just by tapping and it's just picking up color on it. I'll keep folding it, maybe over here. And it doesn't come off. You can even take a smaller brush and kind of scrub some of it off. Right in here, maybe come up a little higher. Down here in the reds, I'm just gonna kind of maybe streak some color. Right. And maybe, you know what? I think I'm gonna go in, pick up uh, just just a touch. some darks, maybe a little tap of brown, or you have black, that works. I usually don't use black, I usually mix my own. I just want a dark color, keep it towards the blue tones. I'm gonna tap it on here just to get some excess off. And over here, maybe, maybe we got a thundercloud coming in here. Let's go a little darker. Maybe we got a stormy day, a nice, and then I'm just got wet my brush and kind of pulling that out. Pick up some more of the blues. Touch of that. And usually the way I make black is I usually use um, my green, my dark greens, alizarin crimson, and blues. Mix it together and you get that sort of a black. And then on the bottom, you just kind of add some water. Pull across. Okay. 
Maybe on the other side there's maybe a few over here for me, and I don't want a lot here. And then I'm going to take some of the, a little bit of the alizarin underneath. And the same here. This looks like there's something, maybe a storm moving in. We're going to pull across. And just a little water there, pull that down. All right, we've got a sky there underneath. I'm going to take some of my blues, some of my greens, and just a touch of the brown. I don't want black per se, I want in here. And I'm going to take my bigger brush underneath it and kind of pull that out. Maybe we get some hills back in there. Just taking more of the color, kind of tapping it across the top. some of that down. Then I'm just cleaning my brush right along the bottom. Just kind of let that melt down into the background. Okay. Up here I think I want a little more. Make some more of the blues with that. Let that run. I'm just going to add some more water to that. Just let it run down a little bit. Maybe tap across here. Just, just playing with color here. I'm not trying to get anything defined. I'm going to rub up some of the top of those clouds a little bit. And if you get a harsh line, you can do that. You can just take your brush and kind of wet brush and kind of you can see how that fades in. into my greens. As you can see, I've lost tops of my mountains. And I'm just playing with color. All right, I'm going to go into my some of my blues right in there. A little bit of the crimson up top and then just with a wet brush kind of pull some of that color out Like we have a little pond there. And see how you can pick color up. Alright. I'm going to go into one of my smaller brushes. This is a fan brush. 
This time I'm gonna add a little, just a touch of yellow to that green mix. And I'm just kind of pulling up. And the paper is very wet right now. It, so things are sort of blending in. Just, I'm not trying to get anything defined right now. Just kind of, just playing with color, playing with. These look gonna look like some evergreens or some shrubs. Maybe another one there. On something looks like something's growing up on the hill. Back into my greens, touch blue, touch of the yellow, and over on this side, we'll. This one is more defined because it's starting to dry up there, so it's not going to spread out quite as much. The world down here. Get me. In here, we got a little forest going up higher on that one. Let's give it a little, little top. So, you've got sort of a real watery color look to it. I mean, almost everything's sort of almost dripping. Literally dripping down, and you can go back in in some areas and pick out a few so it stands out a little more. Just give it a few minutes to dry. And then bring that land in through here. Let's add a little touch of blue to it. shadow color in there. And then I'm going to go in. I'm going to change brushes. I want a little more control. Just I'm going to take some straight yellow. Maybe. Right there. Wash my brush. And then kind of tap up. Maybe the sun is streaking in there. But there are some trees and other things growing along in there. And back into my blues and greens. Maybe some shadows underneath there. So you've got different planes coming down. And I think uh, more into my blues this time. Maybe, maybe out of here, you can almost see where the water is coming. And just, now this is just a wet brush. I just tapped the excess water up. And I'm kind of just pulling that water out and bringing it down. Picking up a little more of the blue on the tip. Just adding a little bit here. I got a couple different blues going here. This one's a little darker. I've got marine, ultramarine, and I've got a little phthalo blue. As it gets down here, it's just getting a little darker. All right, down here, I'm just gonna kinda get rid of some of these hard lines just with the wet brush. And let's back to my greens and yellows. Or 
Where's my big brush here? I'm gonna add a little water right here. It's just plain water. Maybe we'll do a little hill here. some shrubs or something growing here. And I'm gonna add a little more blue to it. Maybe some shadows in here. That's just plain water. What it's doing, it's picking up some of the color off of there. I'm gonna take a touch of the browns. Not much, just right on the corner, just on the corner. Oops, let's get a little more. I'm gonna wipe off a little of the excess. on the corner. Maybe you got a path or something that comes down through here and just goes off. We don't know where. That just breaks up that little area there. Let's go over here. I'm back to my blues and greens. And I'm going to start picking out a little more detail. Not a lot. I want to keep this real watery colory looking. And I'm just touch the corner with some of the blues. I still got the greens in there, but I just want to put some shadows in there. I'm just picking up a touch of yellow and bringing that back in. Just gives it a little different. All right. Maybe on this side, a little more detail on some of these. And it's still, still damp. It's not real wet like it was before. And I'm just playing back and forth. some yellows and add it to some of the greens. Bring some of that land down here. Back into the bluish color I was using for the trees. Oh, we're getting a nice watery effect with this. I'm going to take the corner of the brush with some of the blues. I'm going to tap it on my paper and then I'm just going to kind of highlight some of the edges of this because I'm sort of losing and you will. You'll lose some of the color as it fades in. Watercolors do dry a little bit lighter somewhere we got some trees or some shrubs there it's hard to see where that water just sort of flows back in there okay this is fairly dry up here 
So I'm going to go into some of my browns. I think I'm going to switch to a round brush. I have several brushes. This is just plain round brush. Pick up some of my browns. Put a little more water in there. Maybe, maybe through here. Just barely touching, barely touching. And then I'm pushing down as it comes down. Back into my browns. Maybe I want to get it darker. And where's my fan brush? Take some of the greens just on the bottom. Kind of fade that base of the tree out, sort of blends it into the landscape so it doesn't look like it's just hanging out there. All right, I have a twiggy brush here, and that is exactly what it is. It's a little script liner or twiggy brush. You can see it's just... And I'm going to pick up some of those browns. And I'm going to start here. You're kind of shaking, jiggle, almost you got a nervous twitch. And I'm just pulling some branches off of there. Again, picking up some more color. I'm going to blend that kind of down in there. some more color. I'm losing my color here. Now make sure your paper it doesn't have to be perfectly dry. It can be damp, but you don't want it real wet. It, I tried to do it in here. With, see where this is just shiny. It's it's still pretty wet. Um, it would have just bleed out. And I turn my tree a little more. Uh, browns. Got some little twigs coming out here. Give it a few. Little... Alright, maybe, maybe one more. Maybe one that kind of wiggles down into here. Now if you want to put leaves on it, you can. Or you can leave it like that. Down here I can see a big spot. I can come in and didn't matter what brush I did that. In fact, while well, I got the brown on it, I think I'll give it a little, a little short line there. Maybe, maybe this side a little bit too. Not much, just, just a little change in color. Go. Let's see. I think I'm going to add a touch of bright red to my yellow. Give it sort of an orangey. Color. And some color here, maybe some kind of shrub growing here. And you can do this with any brush. This I just happen to have this one handy. And where's my got too many brushes going here. Touch a little bit of the greens and kind of pull that out. I just added a touch of it just to change the yellow a little bit and give it more of an orangey glow to it. I'm going to go back in some of my blues, maybe right there, just touch them, come back in. Some shadows in here. And a little bit, maybe, maybe a touch of yellow that just some greens and then just let that flow out down let me try some alizarin crimson I'm 
taking my brush in my palette and just sort of so that the ends are more spread open a little bit. Yeah. Maybe there's some shrubs here. Maybe over here some something growing there. into some of my yellows, pull up some grasses, back in, add a little more water to that, maybe over here, looks like maybe we got some red flowers or something growing there, let's go into some just the deep greens, a touch of yellow. into my yellows, maybe along the shoreline, we got some grasses, and even take some browns, maybe, oops, let's get a little more water in there, that's a little darker than I want it. Maybe some of these look like cattails growing out there. I'm going to even have some brown stalks coming up. So, you can play with this. Now in here I need something towards the middle. I've got this open area here, maybe. Maybe a little grassland coming down. Then I'm just going to take a clean, wet brush, kind of pull the edges out. And go into my greeny yellows. Maybe something growing in there. And then I'm going to go back to my blues. Just a wet brush. All right. Now take a look at your painting. Is there any place you want to touch up? Any place you want to uh, define a little more? Maybe here. Back into my greens. Maybe add just a little more detail there. We sort of lost it. Maybe over here. Maybe some of the greens and maybe add another one a little closer you look at it you see what you like and what you don't like you can and stand back look at your painting I'm gonna pull that down a little bit and then kind of go across I'm going to just take a little touch of the brown right in here, just on the tip. Maybe a, just a change up the color a little bit. So you look at your painting, you see what, what you need in there, what you like. And if you stand back, you can notice, you know, areas that may need, you know, a little work. Other areas that, you know, hey, this looks fine, just leave it alone. And this is pretty dry up here. So maybe, maybe, what? Oh, let's go and put our little bird. Let's see, let me wipe a little bit of that off. Maybe a couple little birds flying in. All right, I think I have a finished painting. Let's sign this one. Now you can sign it with a pencil. Especially if it's wet, if it's dry, you can do it with your brush. So let's, I think that's dry enough I can do it. All right, we 
have another finished painting. I hope you enjoyed this one. And this is our matted finished painting.